Today is the first youth fintech we've had under Stefan, and I was hoping for good things to happen. We've also had a load of gains. We've also still made some more transfer moves in the market, despite the fact I wasn't planning on doing any. And I like to think stuff is going well. Did we get past Nice in the Champions League? And was our youth intake good? Let's find out together, shall we? But first and foremost, the transfers. I sent Kamali out on loan to Paxwell. He is hopefully going to have a good time there and develop he's already considered a two and a half star current busy player now so that's a good sign i just hope that when he comes back he could become a three star player for me that might be a bit optimistic but he's never going to be home good at this point so sending him to the air to is good even if he's only had two substitute appearances with them so far not ideal but i'm also just looking to sell this guy for profit Levanti Genveri is out on loan to Gimo, so that's a good sign. He's made four appearances for the bench so far for his club in our division. So, again, made sense. He's a second-tier player, though, so I'm not shocked he's only making appearances for the bench. Still, more appearances than us so far. While Jose Pena is also out on loan in our division, he has made three appearances for his new club so far, and they are in a relegation fight. We've played against him once as well, I think, so... That's a good sign. I'm hoping he can develop even more as the Peruvian international continues to get some experience. But I made one more signing. I've signed the Argentinian defender, Ricardo Delgado. He's got two cats for Argentina, which probably is not a good sign for Argentina's point of view. And we may have overspent a little bit for him, but I've given him two prisons so far. He's not had a clean sheet so far. I may have spent 7.5 million pounds for this guy because apparently my players were starting to get upset with the lack of good quality goalkeeper depth. I may have panicked and overspent for this guy, but you know what? I don't think it's the end of the world. He's a lean player for our division who can become a star player. He likes big matches. He's a very good with his throws, he's got good reflexes, he's got good kicking, and good decision making. There's a lot of things I like about him, even if his first touch is not particularly great. It's just a minor thing, but I think he can do a good job for me, and that's all I want to say. I think he's going to be really good for me in the few's time. And if Nicola Cavalina leaves us, this guy is the ideal replacement, given he's only 22. So... I've ever spent on this guy, but let's be honest, he's still good for what we're looking for. Either way, we've had a load of games, let's go over them. The first game we had since we beat East Milan was a 5-0 victory against Fasas, and Diaz finds Trujano, he finds Salazar, who was really good today. We double our lead inside 34 minutes, Monia playing because of injury still is good, and Salazar scores his second with that effort. We treble our lead with this goal though, and Ganev finds Salazar by accident, Salazar plays it in the middle, and he finds Diaz, so it's now 3-0, a good goal. And then we make it 4, in the 64th minute game, Salazar getting another assist, he finds Ganev, and it's now 4-0. And then we score 5th, Salazar completes his hat-trick, getting 3 goals and 2 assists in this match. I think it's safe to say he was the best player on the pitch today, and it was not even a contest. We then took on our next opponent and had to come from behind against Mozakovetsky and beat them 3-1. Delgado made his debut for this game and inside 12 minutes 1-0 down, but we got ourselves in front. I wrote Taylor for this game because we were taking on these not too long afterwards. Mona scores that goal, so that's a good start for him. And then we were in front for the first time. Lepersant is able to place a cross and he finds Bognair a good goal. And then we double our lead to make it 3-1. Boxe finds Law, he finds Bognir, and that's his second of the game. A good performance to ensure we're continuing our winning run. And then we took on Nice and lost 2-0 in the first leg of the Champions League knockout playoff round. Yeah, this is a good goal. I can't really complain about that when a player's done that well. Apart from my defending, then we consider this penalty... And it was over far too quickly. We were terrible in this game and we absolutely deserved to lose. 
We then took on Buxy and beat them 3-0. They weren't at their best at all. And Konya, with that effort to open the scoring, he's got some bangers in him. And then it's to 61 minutes in, where Bledo is able to place in the middle, and it's found its way to Lepersant, who's not missing a tapping like that. And then we make it free inside 84 minutes. Salazar is able to play it forward to Garnev. He fires Diaz and Diaz fires the back of the net. A comfortable win to set us up for what I'm hoping is a victory against Nice. Sadly, it was not to be. We lost 1-0 to Nice and um, Viato scores this goal. We were on top until that moment and it was disappointing. I say on top, match momentum was never in our favour, but we had a chance to score, we missed it, and then they scored the goal off the other end, so that's disappointing for coefficients. We then bounced back in the next game against the Ligazag, and we beat them 3-0. Diaz gets the first goal of the effort. It looks deflected, but I'm not complaining. And once that went in, we had to wait until the 89th minute to get our second. Andre Santos finds Hamonek, who scores that goal. Again, it looks deflected. And then we score a penalty. Andre Santos scores again. Happy days. Apparently it's not again. It's his first goal of the game. But it felt like he scored more than once. So that's why I got confused. We then had a game in the cup. And we won 3-1. Tamas scores the first goal of the game. And then we score from a corner. Lepersand plays it across. And it's scored by Andre Santos. And then we get a third. Boxe finds Martinez. His... Lazovic and Andre Santos scores his second of the game. This is the game I got confused about. Sadly, no clean sheet for Delgado here. Despite the fact he hasn't really had much to do. It was just one of those goals that you can't really stop, unfortunately. And Beto got a really good finish. So, I felt sorry for Delgado. It just was not his day for a clean sheet. And then we took on Diaz Jury and beat them 4-1. We took three minutes to get the opening goal. Garnev with this finish, really well done. However, they equalise, and I genuinely thought, are we about to drop the ball here? Bola finds Radulovic, and it's a good goal, but then we kind of took offence to the fact they equalised and scored. And um, yeah, Garnev scores again, and that's fine. Then Torijana scores a penalty to really make sure we're in control, and then adding insult to injury, a minute later, we scored our fourth. Bajos finds Law. Law finds the top corner. A good finish and a 4-1 victory in the league again. In the league, we're seven points clear of Van Fels who are doing well this year. I kind of needed them to be in second last year, but I guess I can't get what I want all the time. It is a sad turn of events, but what can you do? We actually have a player in the top three goal scorers chart for the first time in a while. So I guess I shouldn't be so surprised by this upturn in form. Given that these knocked us out of the Champions League, I was hoping they would not have an easy tie. And thankfully, they got RB Leipzig. So, honestly, I think every team they could have gotten was a difficult tie at this point. But I'm just happy they got a difficult game and they won't get past the round of 16 because that was kind of my goal for this year. I've not got that. Sadly, Hovind are the opponents for Puskas Academia. So, I don't think Puskas Academia are going to get to the quarterfinal either, which is an absolute shame. I kind of hope they could. Unfortunately, because of our early exit and Puskas Academia not having the best of times and the other three teams in Europe doing terribly, we're only going to get a 9.2 season this year and we generally are not going to go up a place. In fact, I generally think we might go down a position if Scotland continue to have a better year. We are losing just 0.3 points, thankfully. So it's not a terrible loss, but it's still a disappointing season. We just need to continue doing better next year. But at least Belgium are going to be losing a better year than us again. So I guess there's that. Scotland are too. So every nation around us, apart from Croatia, who are already eight points behind at this point, are losing a better year. So Croatia and Scotland are the two nations I'm concerned about, but they're so far behind in terms of Croatia and Scotland can't really catch us this year. It seems like we're fine. Belgium's the one that we should try to aim for next season. Though at the same time, Ukraine's losing an outstanding year. So Ukraine could be catchable. Who knows? Then again, so could Austria, if I'm looking at this correctly. So Austria and Ukraine and Belgium catchable next year, potentially. Who knows? 
So I've delayed this enough and this is the youth intake. It is not great. That's our worst intake we've ever had. And that says a lot. Just one top talent. I'm just going to show you Bense Botka. This is the first time I've seen him as well. I don't like the look of him. Third tier player. And he's only potentially going to be a three and a half star, three and a half star player. It's not great, is it? It's not great at all. Is there anyone here that I can genuinely be excited about? Maybe this guy, Biro, who's a third tier player. Yeah, I'm not I'm not impressed by this so far. This is not a good sign. Unambitious as well. Keepers, not great either. Inconsistent, unambitious. And this is not a good sign. This is not a good sign. I should be disappointed by this, quite frankly. But there you go. We've not had our best intake to date. At least we've still got 41.6 million pounds in the bank. So there's that. I don't have any debts, to be honest with you. We actually owed money more than we owe money, so that's good. I don't know what to make of this, but thankfully, it's not the end of the world. The board love me. Fans don't like this, but that might go after this year, if I'm honest with you. So there's the, the developing players using the uh, youth system might be gone. The board are happy with the fact I'm spending money, though. So there you go. Your eagerness to spend the transfer budget as agreed has been very much appreciated. They like the fact I spend money. Okay, good to know. But what I'm going to be doing is ending this here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. Do you think being knocked out by Nice when we did was disappointing or was that the furthest we could go because it was Nice? Was that a worse than a youth head take? And what should be my aims for next season? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions and all of that down below. But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.